Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of an intro to explosions. In this one we'll look at some vortex effects, right? And we'll also look at how to, well, set up your material for rendering, get it nice and realistic. And, well, we'll show you the results as well, so uh, let's dive in. You know that you can use effectors, which means that if we press shift A in the 3D viewports and go to force fields, we can use this to control the shape of our simulation. Which means, yes, yes, we can actually turn this into a vortex, for example, as well. Right, so let's go back to the start and let's find our vortex. So where is our vortex? Oh, it's there. We can scale this up a little bit. There we go. And we can strengthen this up a little bit as well to like four. And let's just see what happens, right? If we play this, you can see it's the explosion, but then it turns into a vortex. It's going to move up and rotate around this origin into a nice looking vortex <laughs> so this is actually a lot of fun to play around with right so here we we have a nice vortex shape forming into our um into our little domain there right and that is actually a lot of fun all right so play around with the force fields for sure I love playing around with them, um, especially the vortex one. So we can now render this out and see that we actually get a nice, nice vortex forming here as well. Amazing, quite beautiful. Um, and then we can just, I will just crank up the resolution to 256 and render or bake that for, um, well, as long as you want your simulation to run, for example, 100 frames. And to bake this, and it's actually taking a long time, and please, in the combination with the explosion effect with the particles, a higher subdivision resolution, um, I may take a bit of time, right? To really set up. Right, and I'm just cranking the resolution to 128 to get just a bit more of detail in there, and then I will just bake this. Right, so how do we bake this? Well, in the simulation, in the domain settings, we do have a cache. Um, right here, which means that we can just bake this usually. And how I will bake this is just in the um, in the particle tab. And here we can see, oh, let me collapse that. We can actually see that we have a replay set as the cache type, which means that we can actually see it happening in real time in our animation window. Um, if you want to bake this though, you will have to set this to be all, right? And then we can actually bake this. And I'm gonna bake this for a hundred frames and I'm gonna click on bake all and we're gonna wait until this is finished and then we'll be back. The baking is done, and not gonna lie, it took a little bit longer than I imagined, uh, but that's because we're combining fire and smoke with the particles, you know, that's just bound to take a little bit longer, but um, it's totally fine, it's, it's not anything crazy, I think it took me like 10 minutes, okay, which is for a fire and a smoke simulation, not too crazy, right, you can go much, much higher, um, so let's set our end frame to 100 as well, and let's play this, right, so now you can see we get a lot more detail, um, a lot more fine detail as well, right? Which sometimes means that we lose a lot of that um, hugeness of the explosion, right? Everything is going to get much more tight if you crank up your detail as well. Um, in this case, I don't really mind because I quite like the way my fire looks, I suppose. All right, quite beautiful. There we go. Um, we could just crank up a little bit of the density to get that back. There we go. We could even crank the fire back a little bit. If we want less of that, crank the strength up just slightly. There we go. Right, so this is quite easy. And if we crank this all the way to the left, we get more fire, obviously. That's how this works. Um, so, yeah, that is pretty much it already. So, <laughs> we're turning this into a vortex. This is why we get this shape, obviously, right? Um, I quite like that. We get that really nice effect. That's there's a fire in like a um a ventilation drain, for example. But I'm also going to just render this out or bake this one time without the vortex, just to show you how that looks as well. So once that is rendered, 
um, I will be back. Um, if you want to render it again after I bake, you will have to make sure to delete the bake, right? Um, so just free all. There we go. And then we can just rebake this um, once again to 100 frames. And then I'll be back. All right. So now this assimilation is done as well with baking. Let's see how this looks. Oh, uh, what's happening there? Beautiful. So let's play it. There we go. Okay. Our particles are still following the um the vortex um, sadly uh, but it's fine i think it looks really nice actually yeah it looks quite cool it looks really cool we get that very nice flare up with the, the explosion shape you know um so that is pretty much what i wanted to show you right this is the very basics of course you can make this look way more realistic if you bake it in a higher um, in a higher resolution, right? 256 usually does the trick. This already looks quite all right. Um, so let's just add a little bit of a final kind of um, a note, a final look, right? With a sky texture, I'd say. There we go. And let's just crank down our color management exposure a little bit. There we go. And so let's also hide our film, make it transparent. There we go, right? So that already adds a lot of beauty. And let's just rotate the sun a little bit so we get a nice look on this explosion. There we go. And now we can crank up that fire value as well. There we go. And we can just play around with the values of our fire a little bit. as well all right looking quite interesting amazing 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 let's see something like that looks quite nice and sun size you know i'm just trying to set up a nice scene to render this out for you guys as well for like a thumbnail and stuff you know <laughs> um something like this looks Quite nice, actually. Let's add a black background as well while we're at it, you know, for a nice contrast. And make that black as well. Because that is the way to create the contrast, you know. There we go. That's quite nice. And we can actually... Alright, just make the background blue real quick. And now we can play around with the thickness a little bit, right? So the thicker we make this, the the real thick this explosion is going to look right and so that can actually add a very very nice look there as well we can crank this up too um to be much stronger and perhaps also make this go a bit higher you know at some point you will also have to play around with these colors a bit more all right perhaps we crank this more to the middle so there we go so we see a bit of Suzanne too in that case. It's quite nice actually. There we go. Quite nice, I would say. Sets to 500 perhaps. And what we can do as well is just add a little hue saturation value to get a little bit more of that color in. At least we can try. It doesn't really do much. And then we actually end up with our final look of our flame, right? Let's see. Um, if we can find a nice middle ground between the thickness and the flame shining through a little bit. Something like this actually looks really nice. Alright. A nice thick smoke cloud. Very nice. Alright. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was... Um, uh, well, I hope it was... All right, so that is pretty much it, right? I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little something as well um, about setting up fire and smoke and explosions, all right? It's quite, quite cool. Um, and yeah, you can do this with any object. You can do this with any particle system as long as you add a little quick smoke, right? Objects convert no a quick effects <laughs> quick smoke and that will add that to your scene and then just tweak the settings all right if you like this please leave a all right if you like this please leave a like a comment subscribe we will enjoy any one of those and then we'll see you in the next one
Cheers. And when you bake it with the particles actually reset, right? So the explode node and refresh with the vortex deleted from before, we will end up with something like this. Right, so you can see the particles actually, let me show that. The particles actually flying out, having a trail of fire. And once we show that, you know, it looks quite incredible, to be honest. Um, it's a quite, a quite nice explosion. And even this resolution already works. And I rendered it on, what was it, like 164, yeah. So that works quite nice already. So once I play this, you can see it is actually building up incredibly nicely and having that smoke popping up beautifully as well. As you can see, we get a very, very nice explosion. So I'm just going to render this out as well, right? So I got something to show you at the start, right? So you've already seen this and then uh, we'll be done, right? So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this on how to set up explosions from objects as well. Um, so if you do like it, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. I would enjoy any one of those. And then we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.